So many of us feel a vague sense of stuckness, a grating, dragging resistance as we try to move through our day. We feel like we can't get the momentum that we need to really get going on the work of our lives. Flow. Flow is an experience that many of us have had, hopefully all of us have had, at least occasionally. It's where you get completely lost in what you're doing. You are 100% focused on it. You lose track of time. You are bringing your full focused energy and skill to an activity that requires your full focused energy and skill. In other words, you are having to try as hard as you can and you're succeeding. You can experience flow in just about any activity. Not something passive like taking a bath, but something where you're actively doing something. Flow can happen in playing basketball. It can happen at work solving problems. It can happen in playing the piano or singing or performing surgery. It can happen through intense conversation. It can happen while teaching. It can happen in cooking dinner or cleaning the house. It can happen in sex. It can happen, as we've heard, in roller skating. It can happen playing video games. And it can definitely happen through meditation, spiritual practice, prayer. I experience flow sometimes when I'm writing. And I used to experience it a lot when I was rock climbing. The whole world would vanish, except for the warm rock face in front of me. All of the little cracks and bumps and the little weeds and bugs would drift downward as I slowly made my way up the cliff. It was amazing. The most important aspect of flow, from a spiritual standpoint, is that in flow, you lose yourself. You become completely absorbed. Think about a sponge absorbing liquid. You are the liquid. The sponge soaks up a spill on the kitchen table, and the liquid vanishes and dissipates into the fibers of the sponge. So you don't actually lose yourself. You lose the awareness of yourself. The self in his view as a psychologist, is actually strengthened through the experience of flow. But I would say that something even more profound is happening here. If you invite in the insights of Buddhism, there is no self outside of our awareness of self. There is no self that exists as a freestanding entity somewhere. I don't really exist in an absolute sense. I exist in my own perception, and I exist in the perceptions of other people, which is different. But that's it. When I'm not self-aware, that self is gone. So when we enter flow and lose self-awareness, we become absorbed in something or somebody else, the self literally dissolves. The distinction between self and other vanishes, and we become one with the universe. Some traditions call this non-duality. We call it Unitarianism. We are all ultimately one, and in flow, we get to access that truth. For many of us, that experience can be ecstatic. Drugs can be a shortcut to it. Spiritual practices can be a long cut to being there all the time. But generally, your individual self isn't gone forever. In flow, just like with the sponge, the liquid elements of you are still there, and when you squeeze the sponge, the flow ends, the universe spits you back out, and you re-congeal. And then, just as Csikszentmihalyi says, the self expands through these acts of self-forgetfulness. The new reconstituted self is a little expanded. It's fuller, richer, deeper, as if we carry some of the whole universe back with us into ordinary consciousness. The experience of flow changes us. It spreads to other dimensions of our lives. It comes from in here. It comes from me, my ability, my intelligence, my strength. 
mine. And in fact, there is some real value to that kind of energy. It's the proactive vitality that fuels so much of life. But that kind of self-aggrandizing energy also runs the risk of blocking flow. It so often includes either self-consciousness or self-centeredness. Self-consciousness is where we're worried about what other people are going to think. How are we going to appear? How will I look in these pants? Will my kids, friends, parents think that I'm giving my kid too much screen time? What will my neighbors think about me creating this crazy garden in my backyard? That's self-consciousness. Self-centeredness is where we judge everything in life according to its value to us. Is this painting useful to me? Is this new person that I've just met going to help me reach my goals? Is this rainbow in my garden going to accomplish anything? Nothing is allowed to be valuable just for its own sake. Csikszentmihalyi writes, Although a self-conscious person is in many respects different from a self-centered one, neither can enter easily into flow experience. Too much psychic energy is wrapped up in the self. We also need a different kind of energy, the energy of surrender. Sometimes to be the person that we want to be, we have to get ourselves out of the way. Religious mystics from many traditions are in touch with this kind of energy and the ecstatic joy that it brings. The bumper sticker version of this is let go and let God. The poem that we read by Hafiz earlier captures it perfectly. What is the difference between your experience of existence and that of a saint? The saint knows that the spiritual path is a sublime chess game with God. And the, the beloved has just made such a fantastic move that the saint is now continually tripping over joy and bursting out in laughter and saying, I surrender. Whereas, my dear, I am afraid you still think you have a thousand serious moves. We all walk around thinking that we still have a thousand serious moves. We think we're going to control our lives or die trying. We think we can figure it out and arrange all the pieces just right and orchestrate what everybody's going to do. But how often does it happen that we think we know what's going to be good or bad for us and it turns out that we don't know squat? How often does the careful plan fall apart? We think something is going to turn out one way and it turns out another way. We think we have someone figured out and they surprise us. We think we can only be happy if X, Y, or Z happens and A, B, or C happens and it turns out to be the best thing ever or vice versa. And at some point, we just have to laugh because it really is like a chess game and our opponent has made a fantastic move and it's just so brilliant and so surprising. We just have to say, okay, I give up, I surrender, I can't fight the flow. And at that moment, a new way of being opens up. I believe that flow has a lesson to teach us. Flow is not just about the great feeling of being immersed in one particular activity. Flow is a way of being in the world. It's a way of being that embodies action and surrender at the same time. Where everything we do, we do with both our full intent and strength and intelligence and creativity and at the same time, complete yielding to the great chess master of the cosmos. And instead, look for places where we can find flow. The letting go that gives up the fight without giving up the impulse to act. Try to let our egos quiet a little and instead become conduits for the energy of the universe. Let our power come from within and beyond us. Once we can plug into that power, there is nothing that we can't do. We can find enough love for everyone in our lives. 
we can become laser focused on our work for justice. We can create joy in the simplest of tasks, and we can even make rainbows shine at night. <laughs>